Mike Florio lays out when the Chicago Bears should look to trade Justin Fields, if that's even still on the docket. As per Adam Schefter, there are some still within the Bears organization that do want to hold on to Justin Fields, which when you look at and survey the pending free agent market for quarterbacks, maybe there's a conversation to be had there. We're going to talk about that, plus dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Eric Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today. So Mike Florio has talked about the situation with Justin Fields, and you know it laid out kind of where the Bears should, should be trying to kind of move Justin Fields sooner rather than later. We're actually going to play a clip from that here in a second. But when you kind of look at what Ryan Poles has set up in, in re-signing Jalen Johnson to long-term uh, extension, trading for Ryan Bates, it has put a, a you know, it's, it's taken some away from both the draft capital and considerably left from the uh, salary cap that the Chicago Bears have as well, which has led many Bears fans to, to wonder and think, is, is that an indication that the Bears could be looking for that historic call back to get more draft picks in there, and we're going to talk about that and kind of lay out the whole situation here. But it all kind of pins and pivots on what the Chicago Bears plan to do with Justin Fields. Now, Mike Florio actually talked about that situation, and he said this: "You got to move Justin Fields now. Here's why: yes. Monday at 11 Central. What's going to happen is the teams will start calling agents, and they'll have the target list at the positions they're interested in spending money on in free agency. Option A: Okay, I'm looking for a quarterback." Kirk Cousins, all right, here's our offer. I need to know right away, are you taking it or not? Uh, because I'm going to move on to option B. He says yes, he says no. They move on to option B. Baker Mayfield, yes or no? Okay, option C. And I'm just using that by way of example. You got to be in that, that mainstream, that game of musical chairs if you're the Bears, as teams are filling these spots. Because by Tuesday, where's the spot going to be? And then what they'd have to do, if the chairs fill up with veteran quarterbacks who are available without a trade, then what you got to do is you got to wait until after round one of the draft and hope that a team that had said, we'll just get our quarterback there, doesn't get the guy they want, and a market blossoms for Justin Fields for a second round pick in that 18 hours between the end of round one and the start of round two. But that's a hell of a risk because if it doesn't happen then. You got Justin Fields under contract. You got his fifth year option deadline staring you in the face. And you've just taken Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels with the first overall pick in the draft. So they need to do this now. They need to get the deal in place now because by next Tuesday, teams will have gobbled up the available veteran free agents and there might not be an obvious spot to trade Justin Fields. And kind of laying out the fact that the Bears have to look to do something before March 11th. And, you know, this is kind of added into the fact that when you look at it, the Atlanta Hawks, who for a long time were mentioned as one of the favorites for Justin Fields seem to be pivoting towards Kirk Cousins and there's now expected to be pursuing him as soon as free agency opens up considering the fact that Kirk Cousins played in a similar offense already to the Atlanta Falcons and what they run and then added to that that you know they get a veteran in there who's kind of a more realized version instead of waiting for a player like Justin Fields to develop now that could absolutely be um, you know pivoting and, and 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 kind of posturing by the Atlanta Hawks as far as in any negotiations, but when you look at it, Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, everything that Mac Florio laid out there that once those quarterback situations start filling up with veteran quarterbacks, it limits the trade market. Then you kind of pivot towards teams that may be hoping to strike on day one of the NFL draft and get one of those quarterbacks, and you may end up falling to a team that, you know, that strikes out and then on day two makes a call. I think Mike Florio laid out his thought process very well throughout all of that, and it really does make sense when you look at the veteran market and you look at the draft capital and where the quarterbacks are slated to go in that. Now, when you pair it to that Adam Schefter's report yesterday as well, in a large, larger conversation of that there are people within the Bears organization that really do want to hold on to Justin Fields, which adds another wrinkle. Now, that's a small clip said in the Adam Schefter interview where he said that at. He also talked about the fact of the Bears moving on and, and, and you know, drafting Caleb Williams Kind of people have taken from that just one clip to kind of fit their narrative. You guys know, like to present here the full sides of the picture. But when it comes down to it, it's left a lot of people questioning, okay, Bears, what are you doing? You now sit there with about $44, $45 million in, uh, in practical cap space 
that you can use. You have five draft picks. A lot of Bears fans asking, is that truly enough? Is Ryan Poles going to be more aggressive? He's going to get more picks, whatever that said. And it's laid out a couple of different scenarios for the Bears. Yes, you know, the Bears and what they do with the quarterback situation is going to net them more picks either way. They trade the number one overall. Yeah, they're going to get a haul back for it, right? If they do trade Justin Fields, they're going to get a second. They're going to probably look for, maybe even look for a fourth, maybe a future second as well in that, uh, you know, depending on what happens. But they can be drastically affected depending upon what uh, the market sets for that. And so the Bears, I don't think, really want to wait until going into the draft to move Justin Fields. Now, there's definitely a possibility for that, and that could be Ryan Poles playing every option up until the last minute. But if you go that far, yeah, there are going to be teams that fill their quarterback situations with veterans, and you may want to strike before that. So Florio laying out that by March 11th is really when the Bears may want to have that decision done rather than wait until April 25th of the draft. It makes a lot of sense what he kind of laid out there. And so, you know, we'll end up seeing how Ryan Poles plays this whole situation. So far, there's been there's been no reason to not think that Ryan Poles isn't looking at every single one of the of the options that are in front of him to make a decision on what to do with this with the with just everything that they have in front of them, right? So, you know, it, it's it's gonna be, you know, I, I there are some people that say that we can have a, a, a decision on that as early as next week, the beginning of next week. Some people say it could be towards the end of next week. But I think ultimately, whatever it comes down to, whatever that decision ends up being, that you do lose more and more ground and more and more uh, flexibility in that the longer that you wait. Or some people could say, hey, it's, it's, it, it, it's like playing chicken. Maybe the longer that you look at other teams and you hold on to all your cards, maybe maybe you the, the price does go up even on like a Justin Fields for a team that maybe strikes out, maybe they'll be willing to give up more just to get a quarterback in there. It really, it, it, it can go everywhere. And I know a lot of people have their own in, inclinations. I know a lot of people kind of even get frustrated by us here at Chicago Bears Central and the fact that we talk about all aspects of it. But I'll tell you what, I still don't think that all the decisions are made. Now, had the Bears had their top 30 meeting with Caleb Williams and gotten those medicals and all that information, I do think that they would have a clearer set. And that's not to say that they don't have a way that they're leaning, but I don't think they're going to make a decision until they get all the information possible, and that could mean extending out to after Caleb Williams' pro day as well. It's one of the more important decisions that the, that the Chicago Bears have left in front of them in this offseason, and of course, we'll see what it's going to bring. Uh, you know, I, I do think, and I've said before, if the Bears, you know, a lot of people talk about the draft compensation, um, and here's what I'll say. The, the Bears went into the 2022 draft, I believe, with five, draft picks they came out of that with nine i believe so there's still a possibility and in that they didn't trade a quarterback they didn't trade a number one overall pick it really depends on how things shake out and what they determine to do so if you're somebody who thinks that the bears have to do all this to get more draft capital there's still a chance of that now are you going to get the high level draft capital that remains to be seen so i don't I, and i don't even know if that that's the biggest focus on this right now with the draft capital you got montez Sweat with your second overall with your second round pick you got Ryan Bates, who's slated to be now your starting center with a fifth round pick, a proven veteran who's still young enough as well. Like so, the, what the Bears have gotten back in talent. I think sometimes as fans, we focus in so much on they got to fill all these holes in the draft. We need all of this, and it's 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 what you get back. And the Bulls have already gotten the Bulls. The Bears have already gotten considerable talent back for what they've traded already. So that remains to be seen on what they're going to do. Now, with that said, the Bears still have some decisions that they need to make, and I think the acquisition of Ryan Bates has put you know added some some much needed clarity to that offensive line still some definitely some questions there you still need some depths but I think that what this does now when you look at it the, the impact of Ryan Bates in that trade you got to look at it like Tevin Jenkins what's going on with Tevin Jenkins the Bears have to make an extension if they're going to extend Tevin Jenkins or not could this depth acquisition by Bates be be a sign that the Bears aren't quite sure on what to do with Tevin Jenkins yet either I do think that, that that's an opportunity as well also, Nate Davis. Nate Davis is a player that the Bears brought in last season, gave him some guaranteed money. He was one of the bigger for us free agent signings last year, but he had a terrible rough go on that offensive line as far as staying healthy. We know he dealt with some own personal stuff. I'm not going to knock it for that, but he is signed until the 2025 season. Uh, he has a cap hit that it's easy to move off of it if he does have another season of nothing but questions. And Ryan Bates, because of his versatility on that offensive line, could move into that as well. So, I think Ryan Bates is also a player that could long-term be affected. I'm sorry, Nate Davis is a player also that could be affected long-term by the acquisition of, of Bates. 
And then also, J. Tyree Carter, a player that it seemed like the Bears were really leaning on last year at points and times. Um, but, you know, he's a seventh, former seventh-round pick. He's played, he played only 31 snaps as a rookie, 175 snaps last year. But I do think with where it is right now and bringing in Ryan Bates, the improvements that we're looking to bring in depth, bring in some competition as well for Braxton Jones on that offensive line, I do think that Carter, uh, J. Tyree Carter may kind of find himself out of the, ro- the, the rotation. Now, he played 159 snaps last year at right guard, 11 at left guard, and he made two starts last year. So he's still going to be on the roster. I don't think he's at risk to be cut. But with Doug Kramer still there, who the Bears do look highly upon, who does have some versatility, mainly a center, though, and, and depending on what they do in either free agency or the draft with that offensive line, don't be surprised if you see J. Tyree Carter kind of phased out even in the role that he had last year, which already admittedly wasn't the biggest role on that offensive line anyway. So be on the lookout for that. We'll continue to monitor that as the Bears make decisions, things like that. But all right, it's Friday, so you know that means it's mailbag day here at Chicago Bears Central. We got six voicemails we got to get into. Let's go ahead and play this first one. This one's from Fred. What's up, Hayes? This is your boy, Fred, man. Come on, you boys. What it do? That Steve-O, kev what's the word? Hey, man, I, I like that uh that trade that uh, Ryan Poles made getting uh, Bates from Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, I think they forget that Ryan Poles tried to go out there before when he was a crazy, but he ended up signing back to Buffalo. But getting a guy that's versatile in that line, that's, 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 that's good. But I like to know, like, what we gonna play him at if we got Nate Davis and we got Jenkins? Like, is he gonna start somewhere on that line? Is he gonna start at the tackle or the center? Or, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm kinda curious. Cause I think that was a good move right there. So that way, you know, he like, okay, we got a solid player that can fill in. Cause he did his thing with Buffalo. So, I like that. You know, I ain't mad about that because I did say we need to address that O-line. So it's a start, you know, with the O-line. But let's see, you know what I'm saying, where he can play it as well. And I'm just looking forward to see if he's going to sign Jalen Johnson to a nice deal. And, you know, Jalen get his money. Now, if Jalen would have had at least about six picks, eight picks, he probably would have got his money. But he still deserves his money, though. You know, I gave him a hard time as well, though. Oh, we get us uh, another edge and we get us a safety. We get us some weapons. And get this team rolling because I, I believe like we, we build this team and whether it's just as our quarterback, we build around them and we get to the playoffs because I can see it. You know, I feel it. I think this is going to be our season though. So I'm just looking forward, but I just want to put that out there and, and speak on that, man. Thanks again. Love what y'all doing, man. Chicago up, better down or nothing. All right. So, uh, you talk about the Ryan Bates trade. I do think Ryan Bates currently right now slated to be the starting center. Um, I think he's 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 cheaper than Lucas Patrick. He's better than Lucas Patrick. He's younger and he's more healthy. That's just all what it shakes up to be. Now, I do think the Bears would be remiss to not try to find a center in somewhere in this draft that either you can push for the starting position or you're developing to be your future long-term starter and then move Bates to that, that versatile role who's able to play all up and down that offensive line. The switchability there I think is going to be big for him. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. As far as Jalen John, Jalen got his money. And that's the biggest thing. And I know you left this voicemail before, but Jalen Johnson got his money. He got paid on a reasonable contract. He's the eighth highest paid corner in the league. He got paid for less than what the franchise tag was. He got his guaranteed money up front. This was another masterclass by Ryan Poles to go out and get shit done. And that's what I love the most about Ryan Poles is that he just gets things done for the Chicago Bears team. Does he always go about it the most conventional way? No, but he he sets himself up. And I love even had they not, Resign Jalen Johnson. He set himself up to get two first round picks back if a team ended up signing him and the Bears decided not to match. It was just well played by Ryan Poles. And I think sometimes as fans, we don't always get all the intricacies that go into some of these moves, but Ryan Poles is playing this masterfully. And I love the fact that he's leading my Chicago Bears. All right, let's get into the next one. This one's from Darius. What's going on, man? Darius and Dallas here. I got to sneak one more quarterback related question. I know you don't want to hear it, Hayes, but just let me just sneak one more in. Uh, <clears throat> man, you got that old boy, uh, what's his name, Bates? Uh, you got him. I heard they tracked that fifth round pick for him. I wanted him last year. Uh, I don't know why he didn't play much with Buffalo, but we got him last. I wanted him last year. Uh, it looks like he's a hell of a lot better option than Lucas Patrick, and he's a big old boy. He can play that center just fine, so I think we're solid there. But um, you know, instantly, you know how Bears fans are. You hear a lot of negative shit anytime we do anything. And talking about how we had to give up a fifth round pick because we only have five picks in the draft now. 
an entire draft. But that lets me know that we probably keep in Justin. We got a haul coming on the way, I think, with that first round. Ryan Poles ain't just going to sit up and go into the draft with no five picks and call it a day. So it's got to be a haul coming. I think he already knows about it, and that's why he said to hell with that fifth round pick. You could bring us a center in here. Uh, I think it's going to be a haul coming, fellas. I think, I think Justin's going to stay, and I think that indicates uh, Ryan Poles is a very strategic guy. He is not just going to go into the draft with no five picks. Okay, that's like some Ryan Pace shit. Um, I think it's a haul coming at that number one, and I think that indicates it, man. Y'all let me know who's thinking about that. Take this up there now. Darius with great, great insight, great thought process. And again, in what I'm about to respond to, Darius, I'm not saying that, you can't, that you're not, not necessarily right. I'm just trying to offer a different perspective on it. Like I said, Five uh, picks, uh, having only five picks does not necessarily mean the Hall's coming. I would love for it to mean that, right? Because, again, I'm a guy who would love to see Justin Fields stay on this team, but I don't think that that necessarily means it. Like I said in an earlier segment, we went into the 2022 draft with only five picks, I believe, and we came out of that. And you got to keep in mind also, part of what we got from this year's two draft picks that we gave up in the second round and the fifth round, that turned into Montez Sweat, who was an absolute dog on that defensive line, and then it also... Uh, Ryan Bates, who slated to be that starting center for us. So I don't necessarily think that it's a foregone conclusion that a Hall is coming. I do uh, I do agree, though, with your mindset and how your perspective is on what that could mean for a Hall coming. I just don't necessarily think that's going to be the foregone conclusion that some people are painting it out to be. I don't think that. Just like I've said before, I don't think that anything necessarily points to the Bears are absolutely drafting Caleb or they're after, absolutely keeping Justin Fields, yet everything is kind of up in air right now. And I think the Bears are really going over all those situations. Now, like I said, every move gets us a a step closer to that clarity. I truly do feel that. Every move gets us closer to that clarity. I will go so far as to this, say this. In yesterday's daily episode, I talked about players that were franchise tagged that could still be traded for. I'd say this. If we see the Chicago Bears make a trade during this free agent, season before the draft happens and they give up another draft pick in this year's draft or even I'd say a draft pick a high draft pick if it's even as high as a third round in next year's draft that's where I'll start to say oh no the haul is probably coming because you know you're getting some major future assets back in that case I just think where everything kind of sits now with where the talent level is keep in mind too a thing that I did not point out in that opening segment is that when we were earlier in this rebuild right where we needed the most bites at the apple the most talent possible that's where you look at it and say we need a bunch of draft picks but because the bones of this defense is now set we need a safety we need an edge the bones of this defense are now set almost at every other position other than that and then you look at that offense yeah we need a center we need some depth on the on the line we need some weapons but I don't think that that necessarily means that we're going to be as aggressive as getting all these picks like what we were in last year's or even the previous draft, because every year we should be getting a step closer to where the we have less and less holes that we need to fill, and thus you don't have to be as aggressive necessarily as having this multitude of draft picks every single year. You just need to draft smartly. So again, I don't disagree with you. I'm going to say that clear here, but one thing that I love to do and I try to always do with this show is make sure that we also point out the other side of it to kind of give a, a, a rounded perspective on it. But let me know what you guys think on that down below. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Marifa Asa. Bobby, C. Doug, hey, cognac boys, what's happening, fellas? You said, man, Marifa Asa, black yet again, man. Look here, man, this is my non-quarterback voicemail. I know Haley said he don't want to talk about no damn quarterback. So this here is about free agency, man. This, this mailbag I'm calling in, folks. Is about free agency. Now, look here, man. All that $80 million, man, in the back. $80 million that he can play with to be able to fix that defensive line, man. Listen, man, he, I know he got to pay Jayden. He got, he got to give, give Jayden his bread, okay? Give Jayden his $22 million and stop playing, all right? But after that, after that, he can go and get that three tech that he did miss it on that defensive line. Now, I know everybody likes to say, go to Bob Jackson is the man. Okay, we get it. He learning. He learning. But look, you get you a dog. You go out there and get you a dog. Christian Wilson from Miami. That's a dog, man. You get the 20 million, put him on that line next to Sweat, 
and go to her desk and watch them boys eat, okay? You watch them boys eat. They go kill it. You man, listen, you can go out there and you can also, on top of that, go get Jonathan, Jonathan, what's that boy name? Jonathan Grenard. Jonathan Grenard from Houston. He had beef at the end. Another dog. You can pay him about 13 million. You know what I'm saying? You put that bird on that defense alone, then you can concentrate on drafting your offense. Okay? Okay, that's how you got to do it. You can go. And then look here, man. You get you a free safety, a free safety, Julian Blackman from Indiana. It ain't going to cost no more than $2 million, $3 million. It ain't going to be a lot. But you get that dog, man. You get your three tech six with Christian Wilkins. You get you a defensive end with Jonathan Grenard, and you go ahead and play Jalen his bread, and you good to go, baby. You Gucci. The defense is Gucci. We ready. But look at it, man. I got the place to go. I got TCP. I got to get out of here. But you know what I got to do, man? Before I leave, I'm going to say it. Chicago up. It's right now, baby. Let's go. All right. Uh, three tech for Flus. I think it's just kind of, you said a lot there. First of all, Marie, stop screaming in your phone, bro. You you be cooking. But sometimes, especially in the way that we got to edit, it clips. And if it clips the audio clips, it doesn't sound as good. So hey, just calm down. There are a couple decibels down there, brother. Uh, but great point. The, the three tech has been something that Matt Eberflus has literally talked about since he became the head coach of the Chicago Bears. It's important for a system to get that pressure from up the middle. Shout out to my lady. Uh, no, I'm just, <laughs> it's important. It's important to the system. And I think that we have, and that, that is something that the Bears are going to covet. Now, something that I want to point out, though, is that we don't have as much cap space anymore as what you laid out there. About ha- a lot of that's been eaten up with the Ryan Bates trade, the, the, si- the, the re signing of Jalen Johnson. A lot of that's now been eaten up and, and gone into. You also got to think about the, the, the contracts of your up, upcoming class. So I don't know if they're going to get some of those high end free agents. That's kind of the title of the video yesterday, but I do think there's still enough. There's a five tech in this draft I really like. There's some three techs in the draft as well. You got Javon Dexter, who I know you said, "Hey, you want you want a surefire thing," but I think you have to be uh, you have to be choosy in where you spend your money when you have that type of money. And A list, those tier one free agents, may not be there where you can get equal quality by filling out depth and still getting some really good starters there that still can prove some things. I think that's the route that we could go. But great voicemail there from Marifa Asad. We got three more voicemails that we need to get into, but before we get into those, we got a message from our sponsor. I'm sure most of you know anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name and personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. For me, personally, I never took this kind of stuff seriously, that people can take my personal data and use it for their own financial gain. Well, in 2019, I got my identity stolen, including my social security number and credit card information, and it was a total nightmare getting it all sorted out. From recouping loans that were taken out in my name and shopping sprees on my credit card, There are some really bad people out there, and it's sad to say, but it's true. Do a Google search for your personal information or someone you know and see if a people search site shows up. The information is easily accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spanners, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. And so for me, protecting my and my family's personal data and information is at the utmost importance because of the terrible experience I had four years ago. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They will even opt out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in any data breach and exposed on the dark web. Aura's app also features VPN, password manager, real-time credit card, and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your device from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app, which is what makes it so amazing, so that you don't have to use multiple platforms and sites to protect yourself. Let Aura do the hard work, keeping you safe online, and if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link below. You'll be shocked at how much your private information Aura finds exposed over two weeks. I was shocked at how much my information or was able to find when I was using the app. Go to Aura.com slash CBC to start your free trial. Also linked in the description, or you can scan the QR code here. 
Now back to the video. All right, so let's get into these this last set of voicemails. This first one up, this one is from Trap. Yo, what up, Hayes? This your boy, Westside Trap. Man, I'm calling in today because I want to know your thoughts on this uh, that I had just seen. Do you think it would be a good idea if we pick up Jamal Adams from the Seahawks to replace Eddie Jackson? Maybe we can either move uh Brisk Briscoe over to the uh free safety. It'll also stop him from getting so many concussions. You know, he only because Briscoe can cover and you know he's good in the box, but also Jamal Adams also can play the free safety too because he can cover well and pick the ball off and he also can play in the box. So maybe if we get them we can you know go vice versa in between plays and let them you know pick and choose or who gonna be in the box, who gonna stay back, you know, because Jamal Adams is still one hell of a player, and he's only 28 years old. I'll just call in and hear your thoughts on that. And toggle up and bear down, man. Jamal Adams as a prospect. I'm not going to lie to you. This is somebody that I had not really thought about at all. 28 years old. He's been in the league since 2017. And when you look at it, he's been, for until the last couple of seasons, really good health-wise. And I think that that could mean that he could be maybe a depth acquisition. I don't know if you want to acquire him at the at that position um because listen he only played nine games last year he only played one year a game prior to that and then he missed 10 total games in 2000 and and 20 and 21 combined so because of that the health concerns there the ability to stay on the field the fact that he is 28 that's a little bit older than what ryan poles likes to sign i don't know if they go that route now again if you do sign a rookie and you sign jamal adams as that veteran maybe to start while the rookie's developing or just have a veteran depth there that's a different story, but I don't know if you're looking at bringing in Jamal Adams from the Seattle Seahawks to be your starter at that safety position, especially if it means moving Jaquan Brisker because of the health concerns, because of the age, and why you can get some really good young safeties in this draft, and even younger safeties in free agency as well that may cost a little bit more, but at least they don't have those injury concerns, a little bit younger, fit the timeline of this, of this, uh, this, the, sec the secondary core that we have there. I don't know if I see Jamal Adams as being that on the Bears list as far as a, a tier one option to start for the Chicago Bears next year. He could be on their, on their radar for a depth piece, but we'll end up seeing what happens with their great call out, though, Trav. All right, let's get into this next one. This one's from Ron. Yo, yo, CBC, what's the word? It's your boy Big Von from the south side, man, from the low end to be exact. What's the word, man? What's going on? Man, first thing first, congratulations to my boy JJ, man. We're getting paid getting them top dollars, getting that money on that he deserved, man. You know what I'm saying? One of the top guarantees at his position. And um, we, we we need to be saluting JJ because uh, he gave us a discount. I'm going to be honest. He gave us a discount. He deserved every bit of that, I believe, is $76 million with like 54 55 guarantees. So he deserved every penny, man. Uh, he's been a bell cow for us, man. He, he's been a dude who, you know, he hangs his hat on his work. His family is in the DB business, so he was born to be a DB, and he was born to play at the highest level, man. So extremely proud of him. I'm definitely proud of Ryan Pose for getting that done. You know, he was just tagged a couple of days ago, so I thought they was, you know, ways apart from uh, contract negotiations or at least meeting each other at a at a middle ground or at some type of mediation, but hey, we got the job done and that's all that matters, man. Moving forward, I really don't want to talk about the uh, elephant in the room. I really don't. So we're going to move past that. My question to you guys is this. With us having that number nine pick, do you think it's more formidable that we do trade that pick and we try to um, collect more assets? Or do you think we just stick with our five picks that we got and we rock out? You know what I'm saying? I know we're going to be able to sign a couple, you know, lower tier, mediocre, what I like to call roster fillers. You know what I'm saying? A couple guys we may be able to get at a discount because of their age, may be able to throw a couple proven deals out there. I don't know. But my thing is this. What do y'all think? Should we move up off that number nine pick? You know what I'm saying? With the expectation that what we're going to do with the number one pick? Or should we just go ahead and rock out? I'm going to give y'all my opinion. I think we should rock out at that number nine pick, man. It's looking like the top playmaker is going to be gone. But I tell you what, I'm looking for us to attack the defense. 
You know, the line is, is cool. We got a couple guys up there, but I don't think those guys may be on the board about time we pick at now. It's, it's, it's really, really crazy. I know for a fact something is going to happen, man. I can feel it. Me, myself, personally, I like Jared Verse. Jared Verse is a monster. Lot two, P.I. Did Jalen Johnson give the Bears a discount? And, I, you know, when I initially heard that, I wanted to say no. But then I went and looked and was like, no, they, he actually did. When you look at how he graded out with PFF as the best cornerback in the league, that definitely could have been something alone to be uh, to, to kind of raise that and get in that $20 million range. Now, he did get a lot of guaranteed money up front, and a lot of that contract is guaranteed as well. But I think that's kind of the median that they came to. If you're not going to kind of set the market to make him a top four paid corner in the league let me make sure i get my guarantee money and it's all up front i like it it declines as well over time and i think that that it's it's a smart deal a smart deal and he did absolutely give the bears a discount now as far as your question on the bears moving the number nine pick to kind of go back to what i said to darius i don't know that that's necessarily going to happen now i will say this if the bears have a player that's on their board that that they that they are feel confident in and they could trade down to example for like at number 12 and get that player while picking up another asset. That's absolutely what Ryan Poles is going to do. Right. I think it's situational depending on how that draft shakes out because if a player like Rome Odunze drops to the Chicago bears at number nine and they have him on their board, they're going to take him. They're not going to worry about just acquiring more picks to say that they got more picks. They're going to get a guy who they look as the guy that they want on their board. I think that's the biggest thing there, Ron, to kind of take a look at. But great voicemail there, brother. All right, let's get into this last voicemail. This one's from Grego. What up, Chicago Bears Central? This is your boy, Grego. First of all, shout out to the Chicago Bears Central, man. I, I, don't, I can't say it enough. And everybody, I believe, that call in feels the same way. Y'all the best fucking uh, podcast about Chicago Bears. I'm just saying this, period. Y'all personality, y'all taste, y'all insight, y'all very even-handedness. I mean... I love it. This is exactly what we need. So I had left a, uh, a voicemail about a week or so ago, um, and I was at, uh, just saying about how, and I know it's the new school stuff about, you know, quarterbacks who don't, uh, particularly like top uh, first round, uh, particularly first round quarterbacks, don't throw at the draft. And I'm just going to say this. <clears throat> if we recall, I know for, uh, there's always reason, you know, uh, and I stated in my last uh, wish up about this. I'm I'm just old school. I believe get out there and compete, but that's just me. I'm I'm not of the NIL era, and you know I'm I'll be 60 years old this year. So quite obviously, I love the game, but uh, I'm just new. I, I I got a lot to catch up on this. But I would just say that uh, I, I think somebody had mentioned your bro didn't throw at the combine. You're right. If you remember, your bro had uh, medical issues. Or, you know, just some questions, whatever the case may be. And he turned out fine. But, you know, he does have an a, a injury history, which, you know, is a, I think he's been in the league four years. Not, I could be wrong, but of those four years, two of the years, he's been hurt. I mean, obviously, football is a game. It's a, a violent game, so you're going to get hurt. But I'm not even saying about that. It's just that, that competitiveness in it. And I look at people, like, when they were talking about uh, the kid who broke the damn record, 4.21, I'm telling you. I was watching that, and I screamed. I scared the hell out of my wife. I said, you don't understand what, what, what we just saw. This is crazy. Anyway, so I like to see that the competitiveness in people. The, the, yeah, you can sit up for your pro day, and you can hear all that stuff. I don't think I've ever watched a, a televised pro day. I don't, I don't know. A script or something, that's cool. But I like to see people line up, you know, I'm the best, or... You know what? You competing, I'm competing. We're doing the same thing. Watch me, watch me beat you at this. They're not a heck of to you. But I do have a question. I know people, and, and not you guys, but I hear a lot of people talk. First of all, Grego is just, listen, I, I love how calm Grego is. Like, I, I wish to reach that level of calmness in talking about my team. If you guys can't tell, I'm fired up every time I talk about the Bears, good, bad, and indifferent. Um, but here's the thing. Waiting until the pro day, that's going to be something you see more and more. With the NIL money, with the player empowerment, with players kind of taking more control over how they're viewed in this. Yeah, they're going to be get some players that absolutely go and they have that pride of competitiveness and wanting to set the tone in the combine and get all eyes on them. But you're also going to get a lot of players, a lot more players, I would say, uh, coming up that want to control that narrative around them and be in the perfect situation so that they can look the best, so that they can get drafted the highest. I think that's the way that it works out. 
But great insight there, Grego. And, you know, things are definitely changing. Even in my time, I can only imagine as long as you've been a fan of the Bears. Um, you know, I've been been a fan of the Bears all 37 years of, of, of the years I've been on this planet. But, like, even watching that over more time, I'm sure that it's definitely changed, especially things like the Combine where those young players used to come in there and really want to shine and, and get all that notice and be the talk of the Combine where now players are just like, hey, those three teams that I want to get drafted to, let's invite them to my pro day. Those are only three teams I care about seeing me. So, you know, and not to say that didn't happen a little bit in the past, but I think it's going to become more and more widespread. Uh, until eventually somebody's going to put a cap on it. So we'll see what happens with that one. But great voicemails, guys. Thank you for calling in and supporting the channel like you guys do. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral.gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. Thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, Shy town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.